for Mickey Mouse Church that is coming to, to be more and more and um, which makes it more obvious that we should not go back or go ever to this place to this false religion and that we keep more and more distance as they sink more and more away from our Lord Jesus Christ we should not uh, get nearer to them because they are gone they are not just uh, they are gone and going that is they do not remain in the same place they go further down so there is no need for us to race and try to catch up with them we are very well where we are where we are where, where they are going is uh, is, uh, is death ultimately because it's a false peace that's why I, I'm, you know it's it's no wonder to me that things are heating up in Russia on the same days or the same day perhaps I don't know what the Russian army is going to do today because they're all there they're all the tanks they're all poised ready to to roll in so maybe today they're going to roll in roll in hopefully on this false notion of peace this false peace that has been presented to the world, which is not the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, but in the society at the same time, you know, the erosion, the doctrinal erosion is still going on. So we, we have, there is a general direction of the society given by Bishop Fele, and then you have on a local basis, your testimonies and the testimonies of those who see other things happening elsewhere. For me, I was very shocked to know that uh, the, the priest in uh, Brussels, Father Jean Roux, talked to his, gave lectures to his parishioners on the uh, theology of the body of John Paul II. It's a horrible thing, this theology of the body. It's one of the most disgusting parts of the teaching of John Paul II because it divinizes his sexuality. Catholic Church always says sexuality per se is not a bad thing at the beginning, but it's wounded. So, it, uh, there is a concupiscence attached to it. The only excuse for it is the procreation of children. And there he gives them the... Uh, he trains the faithful. Just like I'm talking to you, he talks to his faithful in Brussels. And he brings a Novus Ordo lecture. who is a Novus Ordo person, a charismatic. And then they uh, give lectures on the theology of the body of John Paul II. That's how far it's gone. That, that priest is gone very far and then uh, um, I was told by two of his confrères still in the XSPX that he took his youth in Morocco and, uh, and then there, there he praised the uh, piety of the Muslims there. Now you're not talking about another sort of priest there. You're talking about a priest in Brussels, a parish priest of this SSPX faithful in Brussels. That's, that's very far gone. How can it be... Uh, <coughs> so far gone because the general direction is the reconciliation so if you reconcile you know it's like maybe Bishop Fillet doesn't think his prophecy's declaration is not that great after all and he says uh, I'm not using it uh, it's a text which is understood by some as having ambiguities and it is not what I wanted to do and I'm yet again against Vatican II but in the meantime many priests in the society uphold the orthodoxy and the prudence of the April 15th Declaration of Bishop Fillet, which is for us the epitome of modernism. Because you say you are traditional, and then you say the exact contrary in the same page. Pius X told us, you flip the page. There you don't even flip the page, it's on the same page. This schizophrenia, this, this, this splitting of, uh, of mind, which is very spectacular in the April 15th Declaration. There is a clear middle line there. Even the introduction is not all that great because it invokes Lumen Gentium, which is a faulty text. But there is a, you know, he, he really tries to say, I'm traditional, I'm for tradition. And I was told by him, I am against Vatican II, I know what I think, and whoops, then he, he slides um, the, uh, the opposite. Now, many priests reason, are reasoning that way. And then in January, we had this horrible 
conference of Father Fugger. We only have the sketch of one of the brothers who took down the notes and published it because he was, he was so shocked. But the brother told us that the, what Father Fugger actually said goes even further than what he was able to write down. Now the uh, two assistants of the District of France, Father Boivin and uh, Laguerre, I think, I heard that, it is not yet confirmed, but I think it's very likely on Father Laguerre's part, took the audio, put it in a written form, and mailed it to Menzingen. For Bishop Lee to see how far it's gone in the mind of Father Fluger. Father Fluger who said, you are not Catholic, if you don't recognize that Vatican II is part of the Magisterium. And I asked you know, one of my uh, confreres, you know, how can you say that Vatican II is part of the Magisterium? Because when the question was asked to the Vatican II fathers, which part of the Magisterium are you in? They did not give any answers. Vatican II itself doesn't know. So you are more Vatican II than Vatican II when you say that you are not a Catholic if you don't think that Vatican II is part of the Magisterium. And, uh, you know, it's normal, you know, popes canonize each other, we shouldn't be surprised, you know, Pope Francis really has the faith, he wants to reform the church. That's Father Fluger, I mean, you read it for yourself, it's, it's on the web. And uh, so, the assistant of district sent the uh, text to Bishop Fillet, and just, what, just now we learned that Bishop Fillet uh, Father Fugger is in charge of the nominations, the appointments in the society. That is, he's the one who presents to Bishop Fillet who is going to be the superior of district, superior of seminary. So Father Fugger is climbing. He's been rewarded for uh, the errors because there is his his speech is veering from regularism into modernism in the sense that action, the apostolate, or what he calls charity is above the truth. He says we are, you know, backward, negative, bitter, you know, because we always attack Vatican II. Well, I, I don't think I mentioned Vatican II that much in my sermon. I, I don't dream about Vatican II and I don't speak about Vatican II in any phrase, but Vatican II is bad. And so a precondition is that we exclude Vatican II. Since I know you exclude Vatican II, then we can carry on. But if you don't, I'll, uh, I'll drill you on Vatican II. It's the same thing when we uh, first... Well, if a um, Novus Ordo priest uh, you know, invites us to use his church, well, I, I told the Novus Ordo priest myself, well, I'll, I'll, I'll preach against Vatican II. I'll say, uh, I'm not for this uh, religion and everything. You really want me to come and say the Mass in your church? And then the priest in Sriki Bay says, well, let me talk to my bishop. And then, uh, then he... Uh, he called back uh, John Cash, and uh, the answer was no. And I love the priest, you know, if I use his church, I would, I would appreciate it. But these are, this, this is before we start, before we begin, we must agree. Otherwise, I'm disloyal to my, uh, to my host, who's uh, trying to be very kind. So I thank him for the kindness. So why is Father Fugger climbing? Father, Cac Father de Cacre, like Father Black, Father de Jorna, these are the old guard. Father Peter Scott, that you know well, is from your country. Uh, all these priests are under the rug now. They are all, Father Peter Scott is in Zimbabwe and nobody hears about it. Father de Cacre is going to leave the society in, August, in uh, October, I think, or November. He's going to join the Capuchins of Morgon. And uh, so this priest, that were are those who voted against the expulsion of Bishop Williamson from the general chapter, they are all disappearing. So the general chapter is getting even more anonymous into the new line of reconciliation. It's our biggest fear. We fear that there is, may not be uh, lots of people joining the resistance at the moment of the actual deal. Because they are cushioning the transition. So the, the new transition now is a, a recognition of tolerance for one year, which will precede the actual signing of the deal. That's, because it takes time to set up the canonical structure. So Father Angles is working out uh, 
cannot be clear what's going to be the structure of the SSPX in the fold of the Nubusordo. And uh, so he was caught by a priest of the resistance in America, because he has a friend in Rome, there. And the description of Father Andres is very clear. And then the, uh, the man had his name, and then the, uh, it's a very clear information. As far as for, for Father Nelly, uh, we were wrong to say that he went to eat with the Pope. He just went to eat in, it seems that he went to eat in the house of St. Martha last year. In a, so in a refectory, so he did not eat with the Pope. But he ate with the people staying with the Pope, I would say, at the place of the Pope. Those are a few things that are emerging in a, in a, uh, recently. But the, the conference of Father Fugero is really what uh, re was really uh, a shocker. God, I think, God is sending to everyone enough signs so that those who are deceived are those who want to be deceived. Because the elements are uh, piling up. And then there was, in January, uh, in February, there was this Father Jean of Morgon Affair who gave a sermon in which he attacks the new line and he also criticized Bishop Geralta, Bishop Tissin Marae, mentions Father Fruger's talk. And uh, Father Jean uh, says there is a principle that we cannot place ourselves under heretics. The nulam, nulla pars cum hereticis, ou nulam partem abere cum hereticis. Simple principle, it's in scripture, St. John says, do not say even hello to a heretic. And in canon law, this, uh, and then in the history of the church, the holy office is the most important congregation in the uh, in Rome, you know, before Vatican II, it was the holy office was the most important. It's the duty of the successor of Peter to defend the faith and to find those who are attacking the faith and to exclude them. That was called the holy office. The prefect of the holy office being the, the holy father himself. And you, the, the building which is just behind St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, that's the building of the holy office. And the office of this holy office was precisely to ensure that the Catholic Church would not be stained with heresies, or would not associate with heresies. And it was a constant Catholic practice. And now uh, Father Jean said, I have the permission of Father uh, Antoine, and I give him you this uh, sermon. But still, Father uh, Stelin, Superior of District, of Asia to be and Superior of District of uh, Eastern Europe um, wrote a rebuttal with, with principles. He says, Father Jean, you've got your principle, I've got my principle. My first principle is obedience. And the second principle is authority. And then he's, he goes on to say the motu proprio was very good, whereas many faithful in Poland. But how many people did it deceive at the same time? And the motu proprio of 2007 is wrong because it maintains that the new mass is still good and it gives permission in the explanatory letter to bishops, it gives permission to say the traditional mass on condition that you recognize the new mass, which the motu proprio itself recognizes, and the Council of Vatican II. So how can our lady be the uh, origin of this? So Father Stelin uh, falls into the trap of the motu proprio. And uh, in the meantime, Father Simulan writes uh, a letter in which he says, if you do not desire now, even now, in the, even in the present circumstances of now, if you do not desire a canonical regularization of the society with the Rome which is now, you are not a Catholic. Interesting. This is, it's a very similar remark to Father Fluger. If you don't recognize Vatican II, you're not even a Catholic. There, if you don't want to be recognized by the Vatican II people, you are not a Catholic. Hence, the way they talk about us as being non-Catholics, as being schismatics, or at least bitter, Jansenistic, you know, uh, and uh, Phineites, or whatever, you know, all the names of bird. So, and, and these positions, Father Stelling, are then put on the official websites of 
America, Asia, other districts, maybe here. And they are the new policy. That is, if you do not want to, to go back and join and be tolerated and accepted by the Novus Ordo, you are not a Catholic. That is a shift which is happening. And uh, we, can't, uh, we can't follow that, it's impossible. So the, the same issue as 2012 is uh, being put back on, uh, is, is still remaining on, on the table and not resolved. It's a question about knowing where we are going. And uh, what else can I mention you? Mm. And then there is, yes, the Father Pino and Father Salnav trial. I'm just reading the book of Father Pfeiffer at the airport. And my jaw is dropping because it's even worse than what I thought. Uh, Sardam is denied his lawyer during his trial. So he has to read the text written by his lawyer during his trial. And during his trial, his lawyer doesn't know what he's accused of. And it's basically the defense that has to provide the accusation, the grounds on which Father Sardam is going to be condemned. And Father Sardam, you know, broke down and he wrote a letter of excuse to Bishop Fele, and, yeah, and then Bishop Fele publishes it before the trial, so that Father Sagna is already confessed guilty before the trial even starts. And is defamed in front of all the confreres of society because this bulletin, Coronu, is printed a thousand, with a thousand copies to all the nuns and brothers and priests and seminarians. And that's just Father Sagna. I haven't got to Father Pino yet. And uh, so they are translating it in Spanish. So anyone of you who reads Spanish can read it in Spanish or in French. But uh, at least uh, I believe the, the central part of the book is very, is very interesting. Could be translated quickly in English, probably. Uh, very interesting. Um, so uh, that was too much for uh, you know the good old Father Pivert, my spiritual director who, uh, you know, cut his guns out and fire a broadside against the April 15th declaration, the general chapter and everything. And you had this priest in France joining the resistance, uh, Father de Merod. Father de Merod is one of the most venerable members of the society. He's one of the oldest priests of the society. And uh, the Dominicans of Avrier, and that's also another completely regular situation there, the way they were just thrown out pushed aside into the bosom of the resistance for completely uncanonical reasons. And at the same time, as they set up tribunals and go a long ways to look juridical when they, they multiply a, a very surprising, uh, very surprising, uh, how do you say that, uh, aberrations, canonical aberrations, at the same time, we have so many priests who should be judged and who are not judged. The, 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 our Sholevem told us, yes, to have tribunals and to judge those priests to bring clarity to the faithful. Because the faithful are asking about what about Father, Father this and what about Father that and that. And you need to have those judgments on those priests. And, and this can also lead to a greater disasters. Because when a priest is not judged properly, if he has done wrong, then the victims go to the police. And that's even worse. That's even worse because then everybody is wondering why he didn't judge this priest. And that's even worse. So when they should judge, as Archbishop have told them, because Archbishop has says, you know, we are in a state of uh, emergency uh, and then we're going to have, you know, uh, human weaknesses among our priests, and you, you have to judge the marriage cases and everything. And so you, we will have to judge. They don't want to judge. Or they leave it entirely to the Roman courts. And this is what Father Angus is doing year after year. So our priests, if they are judged, whenever they are judged, and they are very rare, seldom judged, are judged according to the new code of canon law, which is very wrong. So why do they refuse to judge? There again, because they don't believe anymore in, the, in their supply jurisdiction. 
They say, the new soul of the church is the church. So we have to go to them to get the papers signed, to get all the, um, uh, our greatest cases taken care of by the Novus Ordo tribunals. But the Roman Rota, the higher, the higher tribunal in Rome, is talking nonsense and is judging according to the new norms of canon law. And that is a sign also, a very grave sign that true faith we don't see, but he is in fact very grave that they are switching from the, the old code to the new code. When I, I was uh, thrown out on my decree of expulsion, they, they were using the new code, so I told Father Couture, how come are you using 